Hey everyone, my name is Daniel. In today's video, we're going to focus on Microsoft Copilot Studio with Dataverse. And this is a continuation of my video with knowledge, specifically the knowledge feature that comes with your Copilot Studio. Because last week I focused on other knowledge sources such as external websites, uploading your own files, and we even briefly talked about SharePoint. However, in this video, we are completely focused on Dataverse. So I'll walk you through how you can actually use your existing Dataverse tables as knowledge, and I'll even give you some tips on how to tweak those tables so they're fully effective on the Copilot Studio side. So stick around, this is very important. But first, here's my intro video. So let's get started. If you're not familiar with Dataverse, here's a quick overview. It is one of the recommended data sources that Microsoft provides when you're using the Power Platform services such as Power Apps, Power Automate, Power Pages. And Dataverse comes with all of these features and functionalities directly out of the box. It takes care of things such as security, high storage capacity, and integration across multiple services. Also, in the back end, Dataverse 100% runs on Azure. So even though we see it as just one data storage place, in the back end, there are all of these other services that are really giving the true power of Dataverse. And if that's not enough, you can go and extend that to other Azure services as well. Now, knowledge is a feature available in Copilot Studio, and it allows you to add enterprise level data that you might already have, data in Power Platform, Dynamics 365, and even the Microsoft 365 data services. So this is how it works. When you're going and creating a custom copilot, right in the beginning, you have the feature to add a knowledge. However, in the beginning, you can only go and select your public websites or SharePoint and OneDrive. In the beginning, access to the Dataverse is not available. However, when you've gone ahead and created your copilot, you will see the option for knowledge over there. And when you click on it, Dataverse is available for you to use. And I covered the entire knowledge in my previous video. So if you haven't already seen it, I highly recommend you watch it. So now let me actually show you an existing Dataverse table and how I'm going to leverage that as knowledge in my existing Copilot as well. So I want to start by showing you my existing Dataverse table. And that is a real world scenario because you could already have Dataverse tables that you're using for solutions. And now you want to go ahead and tap into that in your custom Copilot. So in this case, I actually have a Dataverse table and I call that as machines. And some of you might be familiar with this. This is one of the tables that we use in the Power Platform App in the Day workshop. So my table already has some data in it, but that's not the important piece. The first and the foremost important piece is what type of Dataverse this is. This is a type standard, which means it is 100% existing in Dataverse, including all its content, which is all these columns and rows. It is not a virtual table, which means that its data is not actually sitting somewhere else and it's virtually being pulled in. Those virtual type of Dataverse tables are currently not supported as knowledge feature in Copilot Studio. And that's a very important point for you to remember. Only standard Dataverse tables are currently supported. And therefore, when you've got a table, make sure that you come into your Dataverse table properties and confirm, hey, is this of a type standard or virtual? It has to be type standard. And in my case, I've got all of this data, but the important thing I wanna show you is the views. So let's click on the views and you will see which one of these are your default ones. So in my case, this is the public preview type default. What that basically means is that anytime a user is provided a link to see all the data, this is the view that shows up. So if I go and now click on it, we can actually see which are the columns that are being used. So in my case, for the table we just saw, there is the machine name column, there is the color, average cups per week and price. This is the one that I have selected. And I can go and modify it how I want because I've got these different properties to do that. Also, I can go and remove a column. I can go and add a column. I can tweak this the way I want it. But that's very important for you to know because in a few minutes, I'm going to show you how Copilot Studio is going to provide us links to this one. So it's very important that you do this prep work before you call it in as a knowledge. The second important thing is what is your primary ID column? Let me show you. So if I now go back and I go back to my machines, specifically go take a look at all my columns, 
these columns over here, you will see something called as primary name column. Again, Copilot Studio will go ahead and leverage this one immediately. So it's fine that I call this as a machine ID, but if you go and actually take a look at the data, that data needs to make some sense. So for my machine ID, I've actually gone ahead and given it as the machine names. So I made sure that there is data over here that actually makes sense and not something abrupt like some numerical values or large grid type of values. No, in my case, I've actually gone and provided some machine names. Very important for you to do this as well. So as a quick recap, two important things you need to do. In your view, specifically for the primary default view, make sure you've actually got columns that you want people to see. And your primary column needs to make sense because that is the one that's gonna be leveraged. So now that I've given you an overview of what my Dataverse table is, let's go and start leveraging it in Copilot Studio as knowledge. So now I'm in the home page of Copilot Studio and I can go and click on plus create. I'll click on new Copilot and it comes to this place where you actually use a Copilot to create a Copilot Studio, but I'm gonna go and skip this for now. I'll click on skip and right over here itself, you see the option for using a knowledge. In fact, if I go and click on plus add knowledge, these are the knowledge sources that you can use. However, in our case, Dataverse is the one that we want. And this option is not available in this initial knowledge availability feature. So what I do is I basically just go and first create it. So I'll click on create, let this copilot be created. And once we go inside this copilot, go back into the knowledge and add Dataverse over there. So our copilot is actually almost created over here. It's going ahead and loading, which is great. And right over here, you see knowledge, all right? You see knowledge over here, you see knowledge over there. Both of them are the exact same thing. So when I click on the knowledge, right now I don't have any knowledge sources created, which is fine, because that's what I'm gonna go and do. Oh, one thing I forgot to point out is that when you're creating the Copilot Studio, you wanna make sure that it's in the same environment as where you had your Dataverse tables, all right? You really don't wanna do a cross environment one. At least for now, make sure it's in the same environment. So I'm gonna go ahead and add my knowledge over here and that's where I see Dataverse. So if I go and click on it, it is actually showing me all the tables I have available in this environment. So the one that I want is machines. And right over there, it says machines. And I can always see that this is the one that I created because I've also got the correct name, which is CRC0B. So I'm gonna go and click on that one and go and click on next. Now, it gives me a good overview of exactly what I know because I know that this is the table. It also gives me the overview. I see the data is correct. I'll go and click on next. And over here, I can go and do some changes. First of all, I can change the knowledge name. I can change the description. I can also go in and add some synonyms. So let's take a look at the synonyms piece. Right over here, I get a list of all the columns that are being used and if I want to go and add any synonyms. Synonyms means another way to go ahead and describe this column name. So for example, if I go down over here specifically to the machine name, I can go and call this as coffee machine and then click on add. And now that becomes my synonym over here, which makes sense because instead of me saying machine name, machine name, I might call it as coffee machine. So it helps to go ahead and add more things over here. All right. Also make sure that you go and put in a description because it really helps from that standpoint. So I'll go back to my back over here. We've gone ahead and added one synonym, which everything is good. I'll scroll down, nothing else to be done. So now I'll go and click on add. Now, once you've gone ahead and added it, generative AI needs to go ahead and process this new data that you've added. So that's what it is doing. It says it's reviewing and finishing, but afterwards it actually has to go ahead and process it. So you have to make sure that you see this check ready over here. Sometimes it might come and say in progress, and that's because how much data are you pulling in? Because remember, generative AI needs to know all the rows of data that you have over here so it can pull that data when it is being asked in Copilot. So again, depending on how many rows of data you have, this status, which go and ready, might be in progress for a while. And it's very important that you understood this part. So let me switch over to the one that I've already created and walk you through that. So here is a Copilot I've created called Coffee Machine Order you can see that this is the exact same Dataverse table that I have. So I'll go and click on all, and in this case, this one was already ready. I did tweak my topics a little bit. See this lesson one, two, and three? I went and turned them off. Uh, you can go and delete them as well, completely fine. The other thing I did is in my system topics for that conversation starter, when I go and click on it, 
right over here in the message section, I went and tweaked it. Uh, it already had some text to it. I went and changed it. So I said, hello, I am bot name. My bot name is Coffee Machine Order. This is a virtual assistant to provide you information about available coffee machines currently available. That is all that this thing does. So what you see over here is the exact same thing you see over there. And then other than that, I have done nothing else. See, in my custom topics, these are it. I didn't go ahead and add anything new else. These are the ones that are there out of the box. So now let's go and test it. In my conversation place, I'm gonna ask this very specific question. I'm gonna say, looking for a red color machine that costs less than $500. We're actually asking a lot over here. And remember, no custom topics have been created. We are 100% dependent on knowledge to give this answer. So I'm now gonna go and click on enter. It is thinking, the data has been sent, generative AI is processing this information, goes into Dataverse, is processing through all the information that we have, making sure, do I have this criteria? And here you go, it actually came back over here. But see the answer that it gave. It says, there are 12 red coffee machines, which means it went through and processed all the rows of data that we have in the Dataverse table, counted how many of them actually match that criteria, which is red one, and then gave us the sum, which in this case it's saying there are 12 red coffee machines that cost less than 500. Some of them are QuickPot, Precision Brew Lite, and AirPod Extra Large, and it gives me a link to it. So let's click on the link. This link opens up directly into a view of our table. And you see what that view is? That's the active machines. Remember, this is the default one that I just showed you a few minutes ago. So do you see the importance of that? So your default view should present the data in a way that the end users can actually accept it. Also, did you notice that in our primary ID column, this is the data. So when our co-pilot was actually giving us all these answers, it said some of them are QuickPod, Precision Brew Light, and the AirPod Excel. When I come over here, it's all coming from this machine name. Remember, that machine name is your primary ID column. So keep that in mind. Your primary ID column needs to make sense. It needs to have data that it makes sense. Why? Because your generative AI is going to leverage that. But just for clarification, let's do one more test. I'm gonna go and put this in. Looking for a blue color machine that costs greater than $300. This is completely different from the previous question that we asked, all right? So now I'm gonna go and click on enter over here. And again, generative AI is taking this information. It is scanning through our knowledge table, which is Dataverse, making sure, hey, is there any criteria over here? Is there any coffee machines that have blue color? And are they greater than 300? And there you go, it came back with the answer. It says, there are eight blue coffee machines that cost more than $300. Some of them are AirPod Duo, Smart Brew 300, Travel Brew 100, and it gives us this link. So when I click on this link, like we saw before, it takes us back again to that active machineness, which is our default view of the public one, and shows us the exact same columns that we allow. Isn't this awesome? Because once again, we did not have to build any custom topics for this. We didn't have to add any logic into it. The generative AI looked at the Dataverse table in our knowledge and gave us exactly the answers that you and I were looking for. Pretty awesome. So hopefully that demo got you excited because if you noticed, you and I put in zero lines of code. Generative AI took care of everything. All that we had to do was make sure that our Dataverse table was of type standard, not virtual. And when we go and add that Dataverse table as knowledge, make sure the generative AI has fully processed it and it is ready. Because once that is done, even though you ask complicated questions to your co-pilot, generative AI can actually get you the answers that you're looking for, just like we saw in this demo. So hopefully this gets you excited to start leveraging Copilot Studio and add your existing Dataverse tables as knowledge. Hello, hello, hello. So if you like this video, go ahead and click on that subscribe button and smash that like button. Also, if you have a few extra seconds, can you go and put in a comment, either say something nice or give me ideas for my next video. And until then, see ya.